Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Natter. In this video, we're going to go over NPM, otherwise known as the Node Package Manager. This is such a central part of the JavaScript ecosystem that I had to include it in this JavaScript series. Technically, it's not part of the JavaScript language. However, it's so central and used by every single JavaScript developer from the front end to the back end and kind of everything in between that it's so important to actually know how it works and how we can leverage it for our projects. NPM is going to be a tool that allows us to actually download other packages or other people's code and library into our project so we can speed up the development of things that we might not be as interested in developing that have already been solved by other developers very thoroughly. So we can actually focus on the core premise of our actual applications. So without further ado, let's just get right into NPM. Okay, so to start, I just kind of want to go a bit more into what NPM actually is. So technically, 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 it stands for the Node Package Manager. Now, <laughs> there's a lot of debate about this and kind of a lot of tongue in cheek comments by the actual company that develops NPM. They love to say that it's not actually technically the Node Package Manager and it stands for all these other funky things. Um, however, it really does stand for a Node Package Manager. When Node first came out, this was really one of the few tools available to actually download packages, which we're going to get into that concept of packages shortly. Um, but it's so central to Node that it actually is bundled by default when we installed Node. If you look at our uh, installation process and environment setup video, we actually saw a portion in it where we actually saw NPM being installed alongside of Node when we installed Node.js. Technically, we could have unchecked that and allowed it to not install NPM. However, most of the time, uh, it's going to be on our systems if we have Node.js installed and we went through the regular installation process. So we're going to get into a bit deeper as to what packages are and kind of why we need a manager to manage these packages shortly. Uh, but just kind of at the back of your mind, just know that it's installed by default as soon as we have Node installed in our system. The next important thing to know is that technically Node uh, or sorry, NPM is a CLI. Okay, we're going to see that uh, acronym pop up all over the place. And that's short form for a command line interface. Okay, there are thousands of these command line interfaces for all sorts of tools and all sorts of languages, not only JavaScript. However, what that really, really means at the end of the day, and that's important for us to know, is that this is something that we need to run from our terminal. A command line is the same thing as a terminal. So when we do things like run node and we point it towards a file, we're going to be using NPM in the same kind of context. Okay. It's not something that we use in our code per se. It's just a tool that we use and we run from our terminal or from the command line. Back in the day, before we had these graphical user interfaces, we had these things called only the command lines or the terminals, and um, it was just called a command line interface. And now we have a graphical user interface. Um, so there's pros and cons to both, uh, but just know that NPM is a command line interface. Um, the next thing that we need to really be aware of when we're working with NPM is that it really is a package registry as well. So I just kind of want to show this to you really quick and what that really means. I'm going to pull up my web browser. I'm just going to search for NPM. And uh, what we're going to see if we kind of uh, pull up this Google search result page in this case is one of the first results is this npmjs.com. So if I click on that, we'll end up at a page that looks kind of like this, right? So now their homepage might change over time, but generally speaking, it's going to look something like this, okay? And what we're going to usually end up doing is searching for packages here, uh, and it's going to give us kind of a list of results, which we'll see shortly. You can see that they really don't like being called the node package manager. So they like to kind of create all these random names uh, that you can play with here in the top. And some of them are quite cute. Okay. So back to the slide. Um, so what is this package registry? Um, NPM technically is a, an organization and they host a server, which is just a computer that allows us to publish our packages to it in order for other people around the world to actually download it. So if you imagine yourself writing a small little utility that does something really fun or really useful or works with some kind of 
a project that you're really interested in. Maybe you wrote something for Discord. Maybe you wrote something for some game uh, or, or something for like books. Um, then you can publish it to NPM and developers all around the world can actually download it and make use of it very, very quickly and efficiently. Okay. Um, so we're going to take a look at how this works specifically on NPM and also kind of how it works when it comes to another tool called GitHub, which we'll take a look at in future videos as well. Okay, so that's it being a registry. And then I briefly mentioned that we can also publish our own packages. So before we get too deep into this, I just want to mention, right, like they don't like being called the node package manager for several reasons. But one of them is that technically speaking, there are other package managers for JavaScript as well. And the most common ones I kind of listed here, and they're Yarn and P PNPM. Um, Yarn was actually created by Facebook uh, a long time ago uh, to actually fix some of the things that were uh, kind of annoying about NPM, but NPM eventually ended up fixing most of those things. So it really is a matter of preference. Um, some organizations, for example, explicitly use one over the other for whatever reason. However, these days they pretty much work the same way and are mostly just as fast as each other. There are some other funky new ones that are starting to come out that do things in a slightly different way. However, generally speaking, most people will usually just end up using NPM. You'll see some tutorials or projects uh, ask you to use Yarn, for example. However, know that most of the time NPM is going to work in its place just fine as well. The actual commands that you might use might be slightly different. Um, however, conceptually, they work the exact same way. We're going to stick with NPM because it's kind of the most used and the one that comes bundled by default with Node. However, just so that you're aware that these other tools exist and they pretty much do the same thing, just wanted to put that there for completion. Now, um, before we actually get to some commands and looking at a package together and actually how that all works, I do want to kind of mention a bit of terminology. So uh, there's a lot of stuff going on on this slide. Uh, so I just want to uh, kind of go through this uh, in as kind of much detail as I can without getting too crazy about it. So uh, there's a lot of debate about this as well. Um, so I'd love for some, some of you watching this video to be like, no, it's actually this thing. No, it's actually that thing. Library is this, package is this. Uh, but generally speaking, I'll try my best to kind of explain uh, like holistically what these all mean. So we've seen modules, right? In, in, in the recent video, we looked at ES modules specifically which was a way for us to export uh, code functions, arrays, objects from our files, right? We saw things like the default export. We saw things like um, the named exports. And generally speaking, that's what a module really is, right? It's a, you can think of it like a file that exports a bunch of stuff that we can use in other files, right? And now if I write something really awesome, for example, maybe for, you know, like I said, Discord or some game, um, then I can give it to you and you can import those functions into your file and you can actually start using them uh, to be more productive so you don't actually have to write all that code yourself. Okay, you can imagine like a math module that does a whole bunch of crazy mathematics. And um, if you don't like math, then you can just rely on that and assume that it does the right thing, um, especially if millions of other people are using it as well. Okay. Usually the modules that are really uh, kind of popular are the ones that are uh, most of the time uh, pretty well tested and pretty bulletproof when it comes to uh, dealing with different errors and things like that that you might not think of right away. Now, the two confusing ones, uh, generally speaking, are these two right here. There's libraries and there's packages. Okay, So I'm just going to quickly uh, talk about libraries. So generally speaking, you can think of a library as a collection of modules that work together for a shared common purpose. Okay. Um, so uh, that really could be just a couple of modules, right? Like for example, maybe this library only has a few modules that do something. This library might have many, many modules bundled together that does something. Right. But at the end of the day, it's a whole bunch of code kind of bundled up uh, and it, it does like one shared important common thing uh, that needs all these modules to make itself work. And that's generally what we would call a library. Okay. Um, now there's a whole bunch of debate about things like, for example, React, is it a framework? Is it a library? Um, but generally speaking, if it does like one thing really, really uh, well, and it just builds on a whole bunch of modules, uh, most people would just call that a library. We're actually going to look at a library uh, shortly, which is called a Lodash, and it actually advertises itself as a library. And I would argue that that's a very, very explicit version of a library. It's a whole bunch of modules bundled together 
that work like a utility library for us to do common tasks in JavaScript. And we're going to see that shortly. A package, on the other hand, is pretty much a library that has been specifically bundled together in such a way that we can easily kind of download it on our system and actually use it, for example, on our Mac or on our PC or Linux. So when we use NPM, we are downloading pre-bundled libraries as packages onto our system, and we can kind of refer that colloquially as a package. Now, you can see that the line is pretty blurry. It's pretty much the same thing, library package, very similar kind of definitions. Now, there's other definitions out there, but generally speaking, you can think of them as almost the same thing, especially in the JavaScript world. Generally speaking, though, we do need a package manager to deal with these packages because there becomes a lot of complications when it comes to things like versions. Uh, maybe we have a, a module that relies on a specific version of another module, but maybe this other module over here relies on a totally different version. And these package managers like NPM uh, deal with kind of figuring all of that complicated stuff out for us. So we don't really need to worry about it as developers, because at the end of the day, we just really want to write code and build cool stuff that actually works, right? So uh, that's a package. Now, the really crazy one is a framework, okay? And uh, technically a framework, you can think of it as effectively an extension of a library, right? So just like a library is a collection of modules that have a shared purpose, a framework is effectively a collection of libraries that work together for a shared purpose. Now, it's a bit blurry sometimes even between a library and a framework, but generally speaking, a framework is much more um, kind of, you, you have to follow its rules and there's like a one way to do a specific thing in this framework and it's either the framework's way or the highway kind of thing, right? Um, so for example, in, um, in Java world, there's a very common one called the spring kind of uh, framework, right? So you have to work within that context. Um, in uh, the Swift world of iOS there, they have their own frameworks for different things like for the UI to develop applications or for machine learning frameworks to develop um, AI and things like that, right? Um, in the JavaScript world, we also have many frameworks. Um, we can probably think of something like, uh, technically some people call React a framework uh, with how it works. We have things like Next.js uh, would be like a framework, for example, because you have to work within the rules and context of that um, series of libraries that work together, okay? Um, so, um, it's also a bit blurry, like where is the line between a library and a framework? And because the lines kind of, uh, even between uh, modules and libraries sometimes get a little bit blurry, but generally speaking, you can think of things in this hierarchy. And the reason I'm telling you all this is because you're gonna see these words used everywhere when we're talking about modules, um, as well as NPM. And it's really important to, at the back of your mind, at least have a bit of a context as to what these things are. So frameworks, kind of the big ones, right? Then we have libraries and, and packages are kind of a, a collections of modules. And then at the very bottom, we have the modules, which are kind of the building blocks and the actual code that make everything up, right? So you can think of it kind of like a pyramid. Perfect. Now let's get to the actual topic of this video, which is NPM itself. Now NPM is a tool uh, that we're gonna run from our command line, all right? So I'm just gonna kind of pull that up really quick just to show you what that actually looks like. So here I have a VS Code open. Um, I have an empty folder opened inside of Visual Studio Code, right? So I did that by going to File and then Open Folder, and I opened a folder. In this case, it's called Code. I'm going to open up my terminal here. You can see that this is kind of where I am inside of my um, directory system. So I'm inside my Documents, YouTube, Intro, intro to Programming, uh, NPM, and then Code. Now, I have nothing in this folder. If I do an ls, it's totally blank. If I run npm and then uh, dash v, uh, what that'll give me is the version of npm I'm running. I think I might actually be running a slightly older version of npm. You might have like eight, I think it's eight. You might have six, you might have seven, right? It doesn't really matter too much with npm what version we're running. Um, I'll show you in a second the documentation that tells us maybe there are some specific fancy commands that work with newer versions that don't work with older versions, for example. But I believe generally, as long as you're kind of like six or higher, it shouldn't really matter too much day to day for the stuff that we're actually using. Okay, so you can see here that we're actually using the program NPM. This is the command line interface because we're running it within our terminal, okay? We're not writing code over here to run NPM, we're, we're running it within our terminal. So this is an actual program 
a bunch of developers have written that actually has a lot of stuff going on in it behind the scenes. And we're going to use this program by all these commands that we're going to look at shortly to actually uh, interact with our projects in interesting ways. Okay, so to start, what I want to do is pull up uh, NPM as website again. And if you have the website open here, you'll have this gigantic search bar in the top. I would like to look for a library called a Lodash, okay, L-O-D-A-S-H. And if I press enter, uh, we'll see a list of search results pop up for uh, potential matches for this library. Now, I, I'm going to click on the first one here, which is just Lodash. And what we'll see is the um, page on NPM for this package. Now there's a lot of stuff going on on this page, but generally speaking, most of uh, the packages will have a little bit of a description, how to install the package, and then maybe some documentation below it. This is a relatively old package, but it's still used quite a lot. There's some nice utilities in there, um, and we'll look at a couple of them in a second. So you can see some nice stats over here. For example, uh, this is used quite a lot. This is 47 million weekly downloads, right? Pretty popular package. Um, they have a web page here. Uh, you can see kind of the size of all the files in here when it, there was a last update, a last publish, uh, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, what, what I'd like to do is also pull up this GitHub repository link, right? So I'm just gonna right click and open that uh, in a new tab. Right, so this github.com slash lodash slash lodash, and that's going to open for me in a new tab. Now, before I actually show you what's in there, um, I want to flip back to VS Code, and we're actually going to start using this. So if I come back to VS Code in here, um, what I need to do before I do anything when I'm using NPM is actually set up a project. Okay. The way that we do that is by creating a special file. We've created this before in the ES modules video, and that was called the package JSON. So let's go ahead and create that. I'll create a new file here. I'll just call this a package.json. Okay. Now this is a special file that node specifically is going to look for to do certain things. Okay. So this is a JSON file. So I'm going to put some curly brackets in here. And we have to have strings as keys and then whatever value that we want after the keys. Um, so within this package JSON, we can have a whole bunch of stuff. Um, generally speaking, we're going to put things like our, our name if we want to publish a package or some versioning information if we want to do that. Um, and Node is actually going to use this file to do a whole bunch of managing package stuff for us and updating versions and all that kind of fun stuff. Okay, so um, to start, what we're going to do is just put our type module in here just so that we can actually start working with this. So if I say type and I do module, um, now I've told Node that this entire project is going to be using uh, ES modules. So what's interesting is if I flip back to Chrome here, what we'll see is that they actually tell us for Lodash, they ask us to use the require syntax. Okay, so we'll see why this is a bit funky in a second, because I mentioned in the ES module video, require is the common JS format, not the ES modules format. So we're going to have to do some finessing here to make this work shortly. Okay, so that said, uh, this is our package JSON. Now, you don't always need to do this where you have a type equals uh, module, but we're just going to start with that because that's what we saw with our ES modules. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install our package, right? So we're going to do npm install, and we're going to tell it to install this Lodash package for us. So in order to do that, um, let me see if I, it shows right here. You can see kind of this command right here, which is npm i dash save Lodash, okay? So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more just so you can see that a bit more clear. What I want to do, though, um, is I'm just going to come back to VS Code, and I'm going to run the long form version of this command. So I'm going to type in my uh, terminal, make sure you're in the correct directory, npm, and then install, and then the name of the package. So I'm going to say low dash, just like that. Okay. And I'm going to do this, and it's going to do a whole bunch of stuff, right? Um, it's going to look like a loading bar, and it's going to do some kind of uh, downloading behind the scenes. And it's going to tell me that it added one package uh, in this many seconds, and it found zero vulnerabilities. 
Now, if you pay close attention, you'll see that a few things happened when we did that. So one thing that happened is this command actually changed our package JSON file. Okay, so it located it and then it changed it by adding another entry and that's a dependencies key with a JSON object, um, which is also keys and values. In this case, it's telling us that the dependency for this project, which is this folder, is the Lodash because that's what we installed. Um, now, I'll go a little bit into kind of what these numbers mean shortly, uh, but generally speaking, this is saying that we have installed Lodash as a dependency for this project. A dependency just means that our project relies on this package to actually work. Okay, cool. So the next thing I want to do is go back to my browser and I'm going to pull up that GitHub link that I actually opened right in a new tab. So if I go there, I'm going to zoom in on this just so it's super, super clear. Um, so this is GitHub. We haven't looked at this too much yet, but effectively it is a, another website that allows developers to share code with each other. We're going to be using it quite a bit going forward in future videos as we start building out more complicated projects with another tool called Git, which is actually different from GitHub. Um, but just to show you kind of what's happening with NPM, um, it's important for us to actually go through this project on GitHub together. So the team that develops Lodash, which is a modern JavaScript utility library de delivering modularity, performance, and extras. Phew. Wow, quite a lot there. Mouthful. Um, they actually have all their code up here right on GitHub. So if we scroll down here, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of different folders up here at the top and then JavaScript files below that. I would like to scroll down to a file um, that I looked at beforehand uh, and I wanna show you kind of a little bit about how it works. So if we scroll down, there's a file called head.js, right? Like my head.js, so E-F-G-H. Um, so right here, this is head.js. So if we click on it, it'll open uh, the actual code for head.js for us. So you can see that this is not a large file, right? Um, this is technically 24 lines of code and most of that is actually just comments, right? Um, what's interesting here is that we can see that we have a function called head, right? Let me zoom in a little bit more here, that takes an array as an argument and it's going to return whatever this expression evaluates to. So it's gonna ask, is the array not equal to null? And does it have a length property? If it does, then return array at index zero, otherwise return undefined, right? Using the ternary operator, which we also looked at in a previous video. Up here, we have a bunch of comments that kind of explains what this function is meant to do. Some libraries uh, do this to make it easier, especially if there's many, many people working on it. And some libraries uh, ignore this to keep the code uh, a bit smaller, usually uh, kind of independently maintained libraries, especially. We can also see here that there's this export default head, right? And we saw in ES modules uh, that this is just a nice way to actually allow other files to actually import this head value. Okay, perfect. So um, it looks like this is going to get the first element of array, okay? So if we give it an array with three values, then it's gonna give us uh, the first value. So they have an example right here. If we give it one, two, three, we're gonna get back one. If we give it back an empty array, we're gonna get back undefined. Okay, so what I wanna show you though, is that when we ran this command right here, npm install a lodash, what npm actually did is it went here. It went to lodash on npm's registry, which is this website. And it actually downloaded all the code that we just looked at, including every single other one of these files for us to actually use locally on our computer inside our project. So where is that code, right? How can we actually use it? So I wanna show you something pretty cool. Um, you might've noticed, right, that there's some other files here that got downloaded. And one of those is this package dash lock dot JSON. So if I open that file, we'll get something that looks like this. Now we're gonna mainly ignore this file, in fact, Definitely don't touch this file because this is something that's managed internally by NPM to make it easier to install um, kind of projects and quicker to install projects without looking up things like that. Um, it has a whole bunch of 
uh, crazy looking stuff in here that you definitely don't want to change. Um, otherwise, you might have to delete the, the file and actually uh, run npm install again for it to download all this stuff uh, anew. But um, you can kind of tell that there is some interesting stuff in here, like Lodash, we can see I uh, mentioned a couple of times along with some versioning stuff. So generally speaking, you'd never really want to touch uh, or mess with the package lock. You're just going to let npm manage it ourself. What's interesting, though, is that now we have a new folder that's been added to our project, right? Node underscore modules. If I open this folder, what we'll see is uh, Lodash listed here, which is also a folder. Now, this might be a bit small, um, but I, I want to uh, just mention that this is actually the same code that we actually see here. Okay, so if I open up that Lodash folder, what we'll see is all of this code here, right? A lot of underscores, some things, and then if we scroll down, eventually you will get to the not underscore section. And if we scroll down even further to the H section, E, F, G, H, uh, there we go. We have head.js right here. And if I open this file, right, check it out, right? We have uh, pretty much the same code. Right? We have a bunch of comments up here. We have function head and array and it returns array at zero or undefined. But then we have this weird thing down here, which is module.exports equals head. Now, what the heck is that? Right? And we're going to see shortly what that actually is. I'm actually just going to come up here and close this Nord modules folder uh, for a second. And I'm just going to sh uh, show you why this is not going to work for us. So to actually test this out, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call this main.js. Okay, it doesn't really matter what the name of this file actually is. We just want to write some code in here so we can actually start using it uh, to test if we can actually use Lodash. Now, the way we want to actually use this is by doing an import statement. And then we want to import something from our Lodash library. So we're going to say import kind of something, and we'll fill this in in a second. And we're going to say from and in previous videos, when we looked at ES modules, we did something like this, right? We did something like dot slash and then the, the name of the file that we want to import from. Now, it turns out that this is such a common thing to import stuff that we install that NPM actually allows us to put just the name of the package directly like this. And what NPM does when it sees just a name of package like this, without a dot slash or a folder structure or a URL is it's actually going to look inside of this node modules folder to see if it can find a matching package. In this case, it does. There is a Lodash package and it's going to search inside there to see if it can find what we need. So what we're interested in is the head, right? We're interested in that head um, export which we can see right here is get the first element of an array, which pops up if I click um, over it in VS code, right? So I just want to console.log out this head function and just see what it actually is doing. I'm going to clear my console here. I'm going to run node and I'm going to run this main.js file and let's take a look at what we get. All right, so we get a little bit of an error, which is uh, kind of unfortunate, but let's take a look at what it's telling us. So it looks like it has a problem with this import head, right? A lot of errors pointing here. So what's up with that? We have a syntax error named export head is not found. The requested module Lodash, right? Which makes sense. This is what we installed is a common JS module. Hmm, okay. Which may not support all module exports as named exports. Common JS modules can always be imported via the default export, for example, using uh, this other syntax. Okay, so um, how do we kind of make this work? So if we really um, think about how we have our package JSON set up right now, we have type module set up. But if we were to look at our head.js file, which was inside of our node modules for Lodash, there's this weird module.exports. Okay, now there's a big difference between this common JS syntax, sort of and ES modules. Really, it's actually a small difference. The only difference is the way that these are exported. So we need a way to actually have this file and all the files using it to be ES modulified, basically, and not 
this older style of common JS. Okay, so it turns out that if we go back to NPM, and I'm just going to go back one step to the search page after I search for Lodash, um, they actually have a Lodash-ES package, right? And what that is, is it's Lodash exported as ES modules. So if I click on that, we can see that this is uh, Lodash exported as ES modules. They have it generated supposedly using their own internal tool. Um, and we can install it using npm install Lodash ES. So I always look here on the right hand side to see how I can install these packages. You can see over here, this is the command. I is just an alias for install. So if you're uh, not wanting to type as much, you can just do npm I instead of npm install and they both do the exact same thing. The most important thing is the package name. So you can see that they have a different package for people who want to use ES modules versus ones uh, for people who want to use CommonJS. So let's also install this and see what happens. In my console, I'll do an npm install lodash dash es. And this is a totally separate package, right? You can see that now we have added another package if I go to my package JSON file, you can see that I've added this lodash-es package as a dependency now. And if I open up node modules, you'll see that now I have a second package in here. I have a lodash-es folder. And if I open that, we kind of see the same thing. We see all these crazy looking files. Then if I scroll down to the H section, EFGH, we have a head.js. If I open this, what we'll see is pretty much the exact same code, right? In fact, if I flip between these two, right? If I flip to this one and this one, right? You can see the only difference, at least for this file, is the way that it's exported, right? For common JS modules, we have module.exports. And then for ES modules, we have default and named exports. Okay, so let's try this now. So if I actually close this node modules and I go back to my main.js, now if I try to import head, but from a lodash dash es instead, which is an es modules based library, not a common JS library, let's see what happens if I run node and then main.js. And there we go, look at that. So we now have our head function being logged down. This is the entire function. We actually need to use the function to actually see if it works. Um, but now at least we're not getting an error because now we're importing this head function from inside of that, uh, this file right here, which is the default export from uh, the head. Now, um, the reason why people use common JS as well as um, use um, ES modules is a little bit tricky. Most of the time, the common JS packages are the older packages um, and the ES modules are usually the newer packages. A lot of people have created tools that turn all the ES, uh, common JS packages into ES modules by simple transformations like this. However, sometimes it's a bit trickier than that and a bit of more manual work needs to go into it. So not all packages have been upgraded to be ES module based packages but most of them definitely have. Now, this says a default export of head, and you might be curious as to how we could have imported it like um, this. Um, however, there is um, another file in here which actually helps with all the exports, uh, but I don't wanna get too deep into that because that is just a Lodash specific thing. So um, here we imported head from Lodash, and that's going to allow us to actually uh, use this function. So if I say like const, uh, first is equal to, I'll take the head function and I'll give it an array of one, two, three, four, five. Um, and this should give us back one. So if I log out first uh, and I run this using main.js, hopefully I get back one, which is definitely the head or the first item inside of that array. Now, not the most useful function in the world, uh, but definitely um, shows us that this actually works. The most important thing I want to demonstrate with this is that when we install something, NPM literally goes to the registry and downloads it and puts it inside this node modules folder. You can actually look at the code inside of there and figure out what you're using for your different projects, okay? There is no magic behind this. It's just a tool that goes to the internet, specifically to NPM.js, 
uh, the website and downloads anything that matches that library name. Okay, perfect. Oof, that was a loss. That was just one command. Um, I want to show uninstall really quick. So you can imagine if we wanted to uninstall something, so I'll pull up the package JSON. Let's say we wanted to uninstall Lodash. We don't want to use it anymore. We want to kind of clean up our project because we decided ES modules is better. We would just do NPM uninstall, and then we would do the name of the library. And that would get rid of it from our package JSON as well as from our node modules. Okay. Um, another useful command is npm update. If we run it just like this, it's going to update all of the packages inside of our package JSON. We can also give it a package name. So I can say npm update. I can say low dash dash uh, low dash dash es, uh, and then that would um, update the package that we're interested in as well, specifically. Okay, if we had multiple packages, perfect. So the other commands are uh, down here are a little bit uh, more <laughs> esoteric, but I'll, I'll mention them in a second. I want to show you this run command though, because this is something we're going to be using quite a lot. Okay, so in order to show you this, I'm going to add a, another key, a third key to this JSON file. I can add it anywhere in this file. I can add it right after um, the type uh, or the dependencies. I'll just add it after dependencies. So I'll do a comma after dependencies and I'll put a scripts tag, okay? This is going to be um, a object or a JSON object, okay? Um, just like dependencies, make sure to have quotes around script. And inside of here, we can have any uh, key uh, with a value that's gonna be a command that we want to run. So for example, if I do um, a list, right? Just like this, and I say colon, I can run a command inside of my terminal using uh, NPM. So for example, if I type ls, just like this, right? If I clear my console and I type just ls by itself over here, um, at least on a Mac and a Linux system, we should get a list of all of the files and folders. I did mention that on a Windows system, uh, previously in a previous videos, if you're using a command prompt, for example, you might need to use the DIR, um, but hopefully by now you kind of know which one to use, LS or DIR, depending on which terminal you're using. So you can switch this to DIR on Windows if LS doesn't work for you. Now that said, um, what we can do is we can actually run this command using NPM as well. Now this might seem kind of strange, but I'll show you in a second why this is pretty useful. We would do NPM, and then run, and then the name of the script, which is the key for the script, in this case, list, okay? So if I run npm run list, it's going to execute that command, and it's going to run that inside of my terminal. So this effectively using npm to execute this command right here. I'm gonna add another command here. Um, I'm gonna call this hello, just to show you kind of some cool things we can do. There is a echo command in most terminals. If I say echo, and then I can say like anything I want, um, and maybe I'll put a smiley face just like that, right? The echo command takes a string after it, and it will just type that to the terminal, right? So if I say npm run hello, um, because that's the name of the script, uh, I think I have, oh, I have to put a quotes around this. Uh, I think I have to do it like this. Can I do single quotes? Let's see if this actually works with single quotes. I always forget um, which which quotes to use with, with the echo command because there's spaces in there. Um, so either single quotes should work um, out here or you can use um, a double quotes. I think if you use a, uh, or yeah, actually I, I, I always forget which, which one of these two to use with these uh, commands when it comes to using spaces inside of them. Sometimes I just have to Google it. Um, so there you go. I don't actually know <laughs> everything when it comes to these, but you can see that we can actually get a printout here when it comes to um, running these commands. And this is running the echo command using uh, this string, which I've um, denoted by the single quotes here. And if I was to run this command just inside my terminal, for example, if so I said echo and I said, hello, my friend, right? Just like this and um, did that and I ended the quote, so single quotes appear to work. I think I can also do double quotes in the terminal, but I have double quotes here, which is why I got a bit confused. Um, we actually get that printed out, okay? Now this is kind of like, okay, thanks Nander, like this is not very useful. Like why would I want to echo things or LS things? I can just type that myself. Um, we can put commands in here 
that we can actually tell other servers to run, to execute code um, that might do a bunch of different things to set up our project. In fact, in the future, when we actually look at deploying these applications that we end up building, like servers, backends, frontends to different services, um, we can tell those services like Google or Amazon or whatever uh, service we're using to uh, host our code um, to actually run these different commands. We can chain them together. Um, we can even run NPM from these commands. It's pretty, pretty darn cool. Um, don't want to get too deep into that. I just want to mention the run command, which looks at this scripts section, and it's going to take a key to run, right? So it's NPM and then run. And then anything after that needs to be the key. So if I do list, it's going to look for list. So if I do NPM run and I spell it wrong, like list listy or something, it's going to say missing script listy, right? Uh, we don't have that uh, as part of our scripts. Okay. Sometimes you can open up a package JSON file in a project and take a look through the script section to see kind of what's available to you, uh, especially for larger, more complicated projects or very, very custom projects on large teams. Uh, what they'll do is usually have a whole bunch of fancy commands in here to do things like start up your project and get you all set up so it's much easier. You don't have to do a bunch of manual steps. Okay, perfect. Um, if you do have uh, trouble with this echo command, uh, definitely let me know in the comments. Um, I'm pretty sure this should work on most systems with the single quotes, uh, but uh, don't quote me on that. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, perfect. So uh, we took a look at all of these so far. Um, these ones here, uh, I, ju I do want to show um, the ls and the root. npm init is just going to create a package JSON in a folder that it doesn't currently exist in already. So it's a very easy way to create like a default uh, package JSON that has a few other things in there um, so that you don't have to kind of manually create it. So if you recall, uh, I kind of right clicked and created package JSON manually and then I added uh, some of these things uh, myself. Um, if you don't want to do that, you can just do npm init in a new folder and it'll actually just create that for you. It might ask you a few questions. Now, I want to go through these two really quick because they're kind of useful as well, um, especially when you're working on a new project for the first time that your team has developed or that you downloaded from the internet, for example. Um, npm ls. So let's take a look at that. So if I run npm, I just want to make sure that I'm in the correct folder. So in this case, you can see that I have these files in this folder and I'm in my code folder and I run npm ls. Okay, so a lot of stuff happening here, right? Like, what is all this? So this is showing that I'm uh, kind of the folder that I'm in. So users and then my name and then documents, YouTube, blah, 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 all the way to code. And it's saying that I have a low dash ES with this version installed. Okay, so this is saying kind of where is NPM looking uh, for these libraries and what library package versions do I actually have installed for my current project? So if I installed uh, many, many packages, I can run npm ls to list out the packages in my current project very easily with one command. Similarly, if I run npm root, what that's going to do is it's going to tell us the node modules that when we run um, import statements like this inside of our project, where is npm actually looking to find the code for um, those imports? Right. So in this case, we have node modules inside of this code directory. Right. And you can see I'm inside that directory. Right. Users. Um, this this tilde is short for users and then my name and then documents, YouTube, intro to programming, NPM code is the folder I'm in for this particular video. Um, and then you can see that we have a node modules folder in there, which is this one right here, which has all of the uh, in this case, low dash ES code inside of it, inside of its own folder. So npm root will tell us the, uh, the, the, the location of the um, where npm is looking to find that code. Now, this seems kind of redundant again, but I just want to show you really quick why this is really important. I'm going to create a new folder in here, and I'm just going to call this like, uh, for example, utilities. OK, I'll just call a folder called utilities inside of this folder. I'll just call it a util.js. Okay, I'm going to use my terminal to change to the to this utilities folder. So I'm going to do a CD and then utilities. Okay, now I'm inside the utilities folder. We went through some of these commands inside of the terminal video. If you need help with some of this, if I do an LS, 
we can see that I have one file in here and that's a file I just created, which is util.js. Now check this out. If I run npm install lodash-es, which is the only thing I have in my package JSON for dependency, right? It's already installed, but now I'm inside a new folder that doesn't have a package JSON. If I run npm install lodash-es, um, does anything happen? Uh, Maybe not, it just says kind of up to date. It audited some packages, whatever that means, and then found no vulnerabilities. Okay, so uh, interesting. So let's see, can I import Lodash? Can I do like import something from Lodash ES? Uh, I'm gonna do head, for example, again, which is the first item. And I'm gonna say console.log out my head, which should be a function. And I'm gonna run a node. Uh, I'm gonna do utilities, sorry, utils.js and I do get my function head. So this is kind of a head scratcher. Again, no pun intended. <laughs> um, why is this working, right? I clearly don't have a uh, package JSON in my utilities folder. So really curious, right? So I wanna show you this is where the um, uh, functions come in really, really useful. So if I run NPM and I run LS, it's gonna tell me that it's actually uh, found Lodash but inside of the code folder. And if I run npm root, it's gonna say that it's looking still inside the code folders node modules, not the utilities folders code module, right? Or node modules. Um, so what's happening here is npm is not finding a Lodash ES inside of utilities, but it is finding it in the folder above it. So it's gonna say, oh, it already exists over there. So I'm not gonna bother installing it again because you didn't really specify that you want me to do that. You just wanted to use it. And this is generally what we want. We don't want to keep installing packages repeatedly every time we create new folders to use that because we wanna use folders to organize our code and then have node modules in one place with one set of code that we can import into all of our other folders, right? However, if we did want to create a new sub project inside of one of these folders, we would need to specify to node uh, or NPM specifically to actually do that. So the easiest way to do that is to create a package JSON file inside of that folder. So if I run NPM init, which is short for initialization, um, and I am inside of my utilities folder when I do this inside my terminal, I'm gonna get a whole bunch of questions. Um, I'm just going to press enter, 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 enter to go through these questions um, and not actually answer them correctly because I just wanna kind of get to the actual meat of this. So I'm just gonna press enter a whole bunch of times uh, and then it's going to generate a package JSON. I know this is cut off by my wonderful head over here, uh, but I'll actually open it right here. So you can see that this file was generated by NPM for us and put inside of this folder um, as a starting template for um, our kind of new NPM project, okay? So if I clear my terminal and now I run an NPM root, what we'll see is that the root is now set to the node modules, but inside of the utilities folder. That's because now we have a package JSON inside our utilities folder it's not gonna look up in our in my other folder, in my code folder anymore, because it's already found a package JSON inside of my utilities folder. So if I run npm ls, what we'll see is that it's empty, right? Now I have nothing. I don't have any, any dependencies inside of this package JSON in my utilities folder, right? If I try to import head from lodash-es, let's see what happens. I'm gonna run node and I'm going to run uh, util.js, and you're gonna see that, oh, we cannot, um, we cannot use an import statement outside of a module, so in this case, uh, I need to actually uh, go back to my package JSON, add a new thing in here, which is going to be type uh, module, right? Uh, so that we can actually enable ES modules for our project. I'm gonna save that, gonna erase this, try this one more time, um, and we're gonna see that this works, okay. So now this is probably not what we expected. So it's just like, okay, were you lying to me, Nader? I thought you said that we could have a totally new package JSON and have its own set of packages and all that kind of shazam, right? Well, that's true. However, what's gonna happen 
if NPM doesn't find the package it's looking for inside of the closest package JSON, right, which is the one in this folder currently, there is no Lodash ES in here, right? There's no even node modules in this folder. It's empty, right? It's going to keep looking up folders until it gets to kind of a root folder. Okay, so if I run an npm ls, what we'll see is that it's looking inside this utilities folder um, for, uh, for, in this case, there's nothing, right? And I run npm root, it's looking inside of uh, this node modules folder, which actually doesn't um, exist, right? So it's, it's just not there, okay? So um, I believe the command is npm uh, root dash g, uh, which is short for global. And you can see that it's going to keep looking for folders up, 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 all the way up these directories. It's going to look in here. It's going to look in here. It's going to look in YouTube. It's going to look in documents until it gets to kind of the, the root, the top of my file system that it's allowed to go to at least. And then it's going to look in this node modules folder right here, which is kind of the global node modules. Whenever we install global uh, programs using NPM, they go in here. We're not going to get into that in this video because that's a whole nother topic. And I want to keep this one short and sweet and to the point when it comes to specifically setting up NPM and how it works internally for a starter project. Um, but if it doesn't find the package, it's going to keep looking up folders until it can't find it anymore. And if it doesn't find it over here still, then it's going to break. Okay, it's just going to give us an error saying package not found. Um, you just don't have it installed anywhere, anywhere in your file system. Okay, so what I'm going to do to show that is I'm going to go back um, up to my code folder, which is one above the utilities. I'm going to run npm uninstall lodash dash es. Okay, and that's going to take it out. And now if I look at this package JSON uh, for my code folder, there's no dependencies. Right, Lodash ES is gone. Um, and if I now go back into my utilities folder, and if I try to run node util.js, now I'm going to get an error, right? Cannot find package Lodash from in here, right? Um, this worked previously because it was able to actually go up to this node modules right here and check for uh, Lodash ES, and it did exist. I don't have Lodash globally installed on my computer. So it's actually going to uh, not give us anything because it can't find the actual code for it, it doesn't exist. Um, I believe if I clear my terminal and I run npm um, ls-g as well for list globally what's available. Um, let's take a look at what that gives me in a second. I don't know why this command takes so long to run on my computer. Um, this should hopefully give me the globally available um, packages, which means at that in, in this uh, file right here, which is that root folder, the, the real root folder that's all the way at the top. You can see I have a bunch of uh, kind of random um, things installed over here um, and, and Lodash is not in there. Okay, If I had Lodash in there, it would have been able to be used, uh, but it's not inside of my very top level node modules. So we want to be careful not to install things globally, generally speaking, um, but for now, we're not going to get into that topic. Just know that it's going to keep searching up, 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 up. Uh, one level at a time until it gets to kind of your root folder. And then if it doesn't find it there, it's going to give up and kind of uh, barf out an error at you. Okay, now I know that was quite a lot, right? So really just to recap this section, the most important takeaway is right here, right? We have kind of two main concepts when it comes to NPM and working with our projects. We have our node modules folder, and this is where all of the module code uh, goes when we actually install, uh, do npm install. All of the dependencies for those modules also go in there. So Lodash luckily is built in such a way that it doesn't actually need other packages to make it work. But most packages that we end up using actually have a tree of dependencies. So for example, it might need this other package to work or this other package to work or specific versions of these packages, okay? And um, in order for that to um, kind of all work in synchrony, uh, NPM manages all those versions behind the scenes for us, okay? 
Um, this is all managed for NPM. We don't want to mess with this, especially the package JSON. You want to use the NPM commands to remove things, uninstall things, um, and reinstall things and all and updates and packages and all that kind of fun stuff. Okay. So node modules is the place where the code actually lives. When we actually install it, we can take a look and peek at the code and it should for the most part match what we would expect to see on something like GitHub or NPM JS. Perfect. The other main thing is package.json. So we can create this manually or with the init command. This has some metadata, right, for the project. So if I go back here and we look at the one that was generated, you can see there's like name and version description. This is only really important if you're publishing a package to NPM yourself. So if you write something super awesome, you can publish it up to NPM and have other people use it just by simply doing NPM install and then the name of your package, um, which is super, super cool. And I hope to make videos on that in the future. Um, but for most of our projects, we're not going to be publishing them. Uh, we're just going to be using it as kind of a package manager JSON file. We can write scripts in there as well. So we saw that we can um, create and run the scripts using npm run and the name of the script. We're going to use this a lot when it comes to deploying things, but also to keep things a bit handy when we're doing local development so we don't have to run uh, too many commands at once manually. Um, this has the list of packages and all their versions as well. So on that note, I just want to kind of um, end with this. Um, you can see that most of these versions here is like three um, sections. There's like, uh, for example, if I if I look at NPM, I have 7.14.0, right? Um, if I have like create React app, in this case, it's like 3.4.1. I think there's like newer versions, right? Um, so the way to look at this is that there's always a major um, a minor and a patch version. Now, not all packages abide by this rule. And I'm going to create videos on this in the future since I don't want this video to run too long when we actually start building projects with this and it starts impacting us. Uh, but generally speaking, if something is a uh, patch, which is the last number or a minor version, it's generally not going to break our project if we update that library or update that module or package. But if it, a major version changes, which is this first number, for example, went up to four or five, we try to install it and update our project, um, some of the old code that we wrote might actually break as a result of that because that's counted as a major change. Now, again, not all packages abide by this. We can actually set our own versions here when we put our own packages. So not all authors really follow this um, to the T, but generally speaking, um, a lot of packages kind of follow this uh, semantic versioning is what it's called. And we'll look into that a bit deeper in future videos. So um, I hope that that was useful for you. I know that was kind of an information bombardment and working with the terminal, which we haven't done so much of so far, but we're really going to be using this tool quite a lot going forward. So it's super important for us to get really comfortable with how it works and conceptually kind of what's actually happening behind the scenes as we're using um, NPM. Okay. Um, now I encourage you to also try out the other package managers like Yarn, for example, um, if you get a chance. However, we'll be sticking with NPM for most of this course, unless specific uh, libraries, for example, have specific rules that might or might not work with NPM for whatever reason. So I hope you found this explanation uh, useful. Uh, if you did, I'd love it if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'd love to hear in the comments, uh, was this useful uh, to you? Did it help clear up some of like what this node module is, what this package JSON is, and kind of what NPM is in general? Was there anything that was really unclear that you probably would like a bit more explanation on, on? And as well, like, have you just been using this tool yourself? Like, have you kind of just been running the commands without really not knowing what it's been doing? Um, or did you kind of know a lot of this? Um, and did you really know the differences between the different package managers? I'd love to know kind of your thoughts on it and what's important to you when you're building your project. Sometimes it's not actually important to know the internals of this stuff, uh, but I would love to know if it's actually useful to you that um, you're kind of going through this in um, such depth as well. So that said, um, I'd like to actually get more practice with this. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to go through a bunch of exercises where I'm going to get you to download different packages and actually make, make, make sure they work in a correct way, as well as build a few uh, useful scripts out using NPM itself. So I can't wait to get to those exercises. I'll see you in that video.